Welcome adventurers and travelers to our journey through Europe's hidden gems. Where we unveil the top 20 enchanting small towns you've probably never heard of, but absolutely must visit. Imagine wandering through streets filled with history, where every corner tells a story, and the charm of old world Europe is alive and well. From fairy tale villages nestled in the mountains to serene coastal retreats untouched by mass tourism, we're taking you off the beaten path to explore the continent's best kept secrets. So pack your bags, bring your sense of adventure, and let's discover together the quaint, picturesque, and utterly breathtaking small towns of Europe. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Number 20. Positano, Italy. In the southern region of Italy, on the Amalfi Coast, is the cliffside hamlet of Positano. Positano nearly looks like a gigantic pyramid at first glance, with colorful, traditional structures and boutique hotels erected on every floor. In the Middle Ages, Positano was a prosperous market port that hosted commerce and fish and other commodities. Since the Roman Empire, it has also been a popular resort area because of its riches and beauty. In the 1950s, Positano became incredibly popular with holidaymakers, and it has remained somewhat of a tourist hotspot ever since. In Positano, as well as around the Amalfi Coast, summer is prime time, when throngs of vacationers swarm the town to enjoy the sun and relax on the beaches. The weather is still beautiful and most stores, restaurants, and hotels are open until late October, even though the tourists usually leave in early September. Almost everything shuts down for the winter after that and reopens in April, Positano's picturesque surroundings and relaxed but vibrant atmosphere are major contributors to its allure. Spiaggia Grande blends the two. Rent a sunbed here, soak up the sun, have a drink, and take pictures of the vibrant town above. Seeking a more sedate substitute for the throngs of people at the main beach? Think about Fornillo. Travelers love Arienzo Beach Club Positano for its drinks and stunning views of the coast, it's just a short boat trip from the main pier, walk to the hidden Spiaggia Fornillo instead of the crowded Spiaggia Grande. If you book a reservation at the well-known De Adolfo, Bani di Arienzo, or Remy's Beach Club, they will pick you up from the dock in the morning and return you in the afternoon. A day past the Spiaggia Fornillo costs more, but in exchange, you'll get to enjoy fantastic facilities, a much more sedate beach, and a lovely boat trip to and from the beach. Number 19, Norway. Mounts and Fjords. The Northern Lights and the Midnight Sun. Norway's natural marvels define it for many. You will see why if you visit Norway. Norway's landscape is dramatic and varied, spanning from peaceful hills covered in forests in the southeast to breathtaking fjords and glaciers in the west to the Arctic wildness in the north. Norway is located on the northern edge of Europe, with over half of the nation above the Arctic Circle, according to the map. Renowned for its intriguing past and plethora of cultural attractions, there has been a surge in interest in smart cities and distinctive architecture in recent times. However, Norway's inhabitants are above most in their appreciation of the natural world and the great outdoors. You may explore Oslo. Oslo is a charming little city home to just less than 700,000 people. Browse the National Gallery, take a tour of the Akershus Fortification, visit the Viking Ship Museum, take in the Royal Palace, wander along the Acre Brig Dock in the afternoon, or take a boat excursion of the city. Also worth seeing is Vigeland Sculpture Park, which has 200 original statues. Surrounded by wilderness, the city offers enough opportunities for hiking, biking, swimming, and camping, not to mention cross-country skiing in the winter. Go to Bergen, Bergen boasts some of the most beautiful fjords in the nation in addition to an abundance of hiking routes. See the fish market, wander about the historical Rosencrantz Tower, trek up Mount Floyan for a gorgeous perspective of the city below, or take a stroll around the historic Gamla Bergen. Enjoy the all-levels guided treks on the Folchfana glaciers and be amazed by the hues of the breathtaking blue ice climb just two hours outside of Bergen. 
public transit is also available for accessing Foljfana National Park, which is home to the magnificent Golden Eagle. Number 18. Czech Republic. The majority of people only associate the Czech Republic, abbreviated Czechia, with Prague, although this Central European nation is much more than just Prague. It is a historically rich nation with a large number of castles and quaint medieval villages like Sesky Krumlov. Of course, other Czech cities are perfect for a quick vacation, such as Brno. Hiking routes, the Via Ferrata, and visiting the Punkva Caverns and other caverns in the Moravian Karst are sure to delight adventure seekers. For the longest time, the nation was the only one I could claim to have visited because, in all likelihood, I had crossed the border into the Czech Republic while trekking. I always felt compelled to make things right because I saw nothing in the nation. It took me almost 10 years to obtain the chance to do so, but when I did, I spent 10 days there and couldn't help but wonder why I had not gone sooner. Explore ancient buildings and cobblestone streets, wind through the medieval streets, visit Prague Castle by climbing the hill, look up at the astronomical clock, and take advantage of the vibrant nightlife. This place has a deep history and enough to discover. Take a stroll across the oldest surviving medieval bridge in the world, Charles Bridge, or go for a boat ride on the Voltava River. Explore the famous Old Town Square and take in the stunning architecture while attending world-class performances at one of the numerous theaters. Whatever your passions, Prague has enough to offer. The city truly lives up to the excitement. Just steer clear of visiting during the crowded months of July and August. Number 17. Sozopol, Bulgaria. Along the Black Sea coast of Bulgaria, there are renowned vacation beach resorts and gorgeous sandy beaches. However, attractive seaside villages with a rich cultural past and antiquity sit above tiny sandy beaches, well distant from the congested packaged tourist attractions like Sunny Beach. With its striking architecture and archaeology, Sozopol is one of those special locations that transports you back to its ancient roots. Its golden beaches, glistening waves, and cliff-backed coastal vistas captivate you. The old town of Sozopol, which is regarded as the oldest settlement on the Black Sea coast of Bulgaria, has been conserved as a component of an architectural reserve. To fully experience Sozopol's historical atmosphere, take a stroll around the old town, where you can discover relics from the town's prehistoric past, including buildings and artifacts from local museums. You feel transported back in time and immersed in authenticity as you stroll along the tiny, cobblestone alleyways adorned with galleries, boutique hotels, and an abundance of eateries and retail establishments. Take a stroll around the partially rebuilt historic city wall to discover a charming promenade with stunning views of the coastal cliffs. You may probably come upon the exposed medieval and antique remains when strolling around the old town, in addition to the breathtaking medieval architecture. It is free and open to admire them. The local archaeological museum is a good place to go if you want to learn more about Sozopol's past and see more of its prehistoric remnants. If history fascinates you, the museum's tiny but intriguing collection from the heyday of Apollonia might be ideal for you. Number 16. Zermatt, Switzerland. Among the most striking mountains in the world is the Matterhorn. There's perhaps nowhere better to see it than Zermatt in the Swiss Alps, where its piercing peak draws tourists from all around the world. This resort town in southern Switzerland is well known for being car-free in addition to its breathtaking vistas and ski slopes. This implies that getting about by rail, electric taxi, or even if you're feeling very sentimental, a horse-drawn carriage, will need a bit more work. This location is an outdoor enthusiast's dream come true, whether or not you go in the winter. Not to mention, there's an abundance of culture, cuisine, and shopping to enjoy. 
Here are several places to eat and play in Zermatt. Zermatt, a town high in the Alps, has maintained its combustion car prohibition since the 1960s. There are three options to get there, via rail, cab, or helicopter. You may park at the garages in the neighboring town of Tash if you're traveling by car across Switzerland, and then take the shuttle to Zermatt. When guests arrive, there are also charming blue electric buses to assist them in getting around the town. It would be advisable to consider traveling to Zermatt between June and September, when the average daily high temperature rises over 69 degrees Fahrenheit if you want to go there in the summer when the weather is nice and the birds are singing. If you want to see snow, you should visit between December and March, when the average high temperature often drops below 45 degrees Fahrenheit. You have to ski if you visit in the winter. There are almost 200 miles of routes on the mountain, so everybody, from novice to expert, may find a track that suits them. You might easily spend a whole day on just one slope, the 15.5 mile long Matterhorn Glacier Paradise. Number 15. Bled, Slovenia. You will be welcomed at Lake Bled with a breathtaking vista of a very picturesque lake. Particularly if you show up early in the morning. At this time of day, the surface can be like a mirror, perfectly reflecting the surrounding mountains, trees, and the dazzling blue sky above. The famous and stunning view of the little island floating in the lake is the main draw for most tourists visiting Lake Bled, though. There is a chapel and a few other tiny structures on this island. There's a 99-step stairway leading up to it, and usually, a boat or two is docked at the bottom. When you go to Lake Bled, it depends on where you get to the lake. Simply said, Lake Bled is a lovely location. However, as I discovered later that day when I forced myself to leave the lake shore and venture farther afield, the island is only the beginning. Almost as famous as the lake itself, Bled Castle provides some of the greatest views over the surrounding area, the village, and the lake itself. I couldn't help but think of Bled as a type of ski resort when I was there. Even though it is a lakefront, it is close to several extremely well-known ski resorts. Consequently, Bled is very dear to my heart and somewhat similar to Jindabyne, the nearby Australian ski town. It's next to a lake as well. If you find yourself in Slovenia or are traveling through the country, you just must see Lake Bled. It will leave you feeling warm inside and as if you found something truly exceptional. It has a character and physical presence that you won't find in many other places. Number 14. Saigasora, Romania. Saigasora, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, provides a priceless window into the history of Transylvania, the famed vampires, and the Middle Ages. The citadel, which is remarkably intact and a tribute to the early settlers who shaped the modern-day city of Saigasora, is located at its center. It's fun to stroll around Saigasora. Even though the town is expanding, its historic core is unchanging, making it possible for visitors to see everything on foot. Along the way, you'll come across stunning towers, fortifications, and architecture that highlights Saigasora's envied location in Transylvania. Clock towers, however, provide an excellent starting point for exploring the remainder of an area rich in legends and culture, even outside of Dracula's mansion. Reaching Saigasora seems a little bit like traveling back in time. As my final destination in Romania, this small medieval city with its narrow cobblestone streets, steep staircases, and quiet squares turned out to be the highlight of my trip. I sensed right once that nothing ever occurs fast here, so I also properly slowed down. Number 13. Assos, Greece. Assos is a vibrant, remote town on Greece's west coast of Kefalonia that looks out over a small, picturesque bay. Founded in 1593 during the Venetian era, 
this quaint little hamlet is still a breathtaking time capsule that will truly immerse you in Greek culture. Assos is such a beautiful, serene location. Tourism boards purposefully feature this type of charming village on the front of their brochures because it resembles paradise in the Mediterranean. People here are a lot more relaxed back, even if they are not as popular as those in Fiskardo. Additionally, you won't have to worry about hordes of tourists taking over your leisure area. You may just take pleasure in leisurely days spent and meandering along the beach with a view of the harbor. When visiting Assos, you have a choice between two pebble beaches. While you may hire sun loungers and umbrellas from the bigger of the two, the smaller beach is usually less crowded. The crystal blue water on both beaches is perfect for swimming and snorkeling, and they both provide breathtaking views of the bay. Number 12. Lauterbrunnen, Switzerland. Lauterbrunnen in Switzerland 72 waterfall town occasionally, you could be fortunate enough to discover a location so breathtaking that you can't help but wonder whether it's real, after all, isn't that the whole reason we travel? I had the honor of visiting that very location this spring, Lauterbrunnen, Switzerland, is the most idyllic European city I have ever seen, and I have no doubt you will feel the same way. Lauterbrunnen evokes the feeling of a real-life fairy tale town. A magnificent valley teeming with pink trees and spring blossoms, shielded by imposing granite cliffs ornamented with thunderous waterfalls that eventually fade to a whisper as they reach the valley floor. Despite being a little Swiss community, Lauterbrunnen is worth spending the night to get the full effect of the beauty. Fortunately, Lauterbrunnen offers a selection of 11 hotels and one hostel. Number 11. Gethoorn, Netherland. Glide softly along little canals past charming old thatched roof farmhouses, it's so serene and lovely that it almost doesn't seem real. You may slip beneath a wooden bridge where an elderly person could be ambling over to greet a neighbor by taking a detour along a side street, which is another little waterway. No, this isn't Amsterdam or Venice. This is the Dutch village of Gethoorn. It's too isolated, too tranquil, and too silent. Its appellation, Dutch Venice, may create a misleading impression of its size, throngs, and commercialism since it is so serene. The loudest sound you often hear in this water hamlet of Gethoorn, Netherlands, is a duck quacking or other birdsong. East of the Netherlands, in the tranquil and lush province of Overijl, is where you'll find Gethoorn. It is the hub of the canal network in Overijl. The tiny village's reliance on its waterways is so great that many of its homes are inaccessible by road. The postman rides a punt when delivering mail. Spending an afternoon on the river is enjoyable, as you leisurely meander along the little canals, beneath elegantly curved bridges, and past quaint thatched houses. In addition to the Schur shipyard, where the Gethoorn punt is constructed, there are three museums beside the canals. Number 10. Portree, Scotland. On the Isle of Skye, the center of activity is Portree, Scotland. There are many activities to do in Portree, Scotland, which is the capital and biggest town on Skye Island. Popular with tourists visiting the Isle of Skye, Portree offers a variety of lodging options, restaurants, pubs, shopping, and activities. To assist you in creating the ideal itinerary for your trip, we have listed the top activities in Portree, Scotland. We had a week to spend in Portree during our vacation, which gave us plenty of time to explore the town and the Isle of Skye. Skye's cultural center is Portree, where frequent theater, music, and movie screenings are held in the renowned Aro Center, one of the town's primary draws. The village is well liked as a jumping off point for touring the island. The Trotternish Ridge, to the north, is a popular tourist destination due to its breathtaking landscape. 
Notable rock formations in this untamed region include Kilt Rock, the Old Man of Store, and the remarkable Coring Pinnacles. Number 9. Port McGee, Ireland. One of the most well-liked and hospitable locations to stay is the Moorings, and Port McGee is the ideal starting point for exploring the Skellig Ring. Valencia Island, a hidden treasure in County Kerry, is connected to the mainland by the little settlement of Port McGee. With only 120 or so residents, the community is so small that you can walk from one end to the other without the need for transportation. There are many fun things to do in Port McGee, from discovering the untamed beauty of the Skellig Islands to indulging in delicious seafood from the neighborhood taverns. The major attraction of this small community is its location as a gateway to Valencia and the striking Skellig Michael Cliffs, in addition to the usual attractive natural splendor seen across Ireland. Try the Brayhead Loop Walk in Valencia Island if you enjoy taking lengthy walks in the serene surroundings. This 7 km walking path is ideal for all levels of fitness and takes roughly 2-3 to three hours due to its even terrain. Number 8. Ronda, Spain. Do you want to spend a day learning about one of Spain's oldest cities? Next, you need to familiarize yourself with Ronda, which is located around 100 kilometers south of Malaga in Spain. One of the most well-known locations in all of Andalusia is a must-see, its winding alleys, distinctive bridge, homes perched on the brink of a canyon, and other attractions will enchant you. Acquire one of the most common postcards depicting a trip to Andalusia. One of Ronda's most iconic locations is the 98-meter-tall Puente Nuevo, New Bridge, which is home to a visitor's museum. The views of the homes hanging over the Ronda Gorge are breathtaking, so make sure to prepare your camera. To gain a better look and photograph the traditional picture of the Puente Nuevo across the Guadalavan River, many choose to trek up a trail. Ideally, you should schedule some time to go shopping and get some Ronda mementos. Profit from its well-known handicrafts, which include woodworking, pottery, leatherworking, and more. At the Alameda del Tao, close to the bullring, where your day starts, you may take in the sunset. There's a tree-lined avenue typical of the 19th century that offers an impressively high viewpoint. Additionally, the Parador Hotel in the same vicinity is highly recommended if you want to stay the night. Number 7. Mostar, Bosnia. Mostar is a quaint city with an intriguing culture and a rich history that is tucked away in the center of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Mostar, which is well known for its famous bridge and breathtaking architecture, provides visitors with a getaway from the daily grind. We'll go over some of the best explanations for visiting Mostar and taking advantage of everything it has to offer in this video. Since there are no automobiles in the Old Town Pedestrian Zone, Mostar's historic district is relatively walkable. If you intend to see the waterfalls, a means of transportation is required. It is most convenient to see them by automobile or on a group excursion. The stone on the well-known bridge is surprisingly slippery. Mostar has a lot of amazing things to offer. Apart from the well-known starry Most Old Bridge in Mostar and the Bridge Jumpers, there are stunning mosques, historic Ottoman mansions, an oriental bazaar, fascinating museums, and stunning vistas to explore. 
the majority of the top sites are conveniently situated in the heart of the ancient town, making it simple to explore on foot. Number 6. Cotere, Montenegro. The historic old town of Cotere, perched on the brink of a magnificent bay, is without a doubt the crown gem of Montenegro. Even if Cotere is no longer Europe's best-kept secret, its abrupt ascent to the Tour Bus League hasn't diminished the ageless charms of its winding lanes and isolated piazzas. I fell in love with Montenegro very immediately. I work remotely and travel to other countries, but on my tour across the Balkans, Montenegro has caught my attention. Specifically, Cotere Bay, where the picturesque town of Cotere and its quaint old town are situated, has caught my attention as the sparkling pearl. Just south of the Croatian border in northern Montenegro lies a sizable bay with an unusual form called Cotere Bay. But you have to take my statement about it being enormous with a grain of salt. Given how small Montenegro is, size is undoubtedly relative. Number 5. Flam, Norway. Because of its gorgeous position and environment, the little town of Flam is one of the most popular travel destinations in Norway and Scandinavia. The majority have undoubtedly seen breathtaking photos of the terrain of western Norway, which has waterfalls, slender fjords and valleys, and steep, wooded mountainsides plunging into a blue fjord. In Flam, there is a wide range of lodging options available. Choose between lodging in a contemporary hotel near the fjord, a historic hotel, or a more affordable option like a hostel or guest home. This full-day excursion to Flam, which is situated in the center of the fjord area, will enthrall you with its breathtaking views and activities. Take a beautiful bus trip from Bergen to Flam via Voss and Gudvangen to start your day, stopping along the route to take in the picturesque little towns and farmlands. Number 4. Dinant, Belgium. One of Belgium's most beautiful towns is Dinant. Situated in Belgium's Walloon region, it takes just an hour's drive to get to Brussels. Dinant is hence the ideal day trip destination when in Belgium. Dinant, which is situated by the Meuse River and boasts a spectacular citadel, is worth a visit for its impressive collection of castles. When visiting Dinant, there are a few locations that you simply must not miss. You can walk to any of these locations, and the city as a whole is fairly walkable. The lines may become lengthy in the afternoon, so I would advise heading to any of the paid activities first. Perched on a rock, the citadel of Dinant offers some of the most breathtaking views in the city. You may ride the cable car to the summit to reach the summit. Once there, you may stand back and learn more about the citadel's past. There is a playground and a cafe called Les Cannons where you may have a drink or some Belgian fries if you are here with children. Number 3. Lisbon, Portugal. Lisbon, the picturesque and mountainous capital of Portugal, is one of my favorite places on earth the flowing streets and vistas of the ocean. I always like coming here. Lisbon, which is located on the country's west coast to the south, offers an amazing array of attractions, including museums, old buildings, diverse music, vibrant nightlife, quaint plazas, and relaxed cafes where you can people watch. Lisbon has gained a lot of popularity recently because of its affordable cost of living and beautiful year-round climate. Even though there is a growing expat and digital nomad culture here and it isn't the hidden treasure it once was, I don't think it has lost its charm, especially if you visit in the shoulder season when the weather is still fantastic. Lisbon has several beaches that are ideal for enjoying the lovely summertime weather of the city. The greatest beaches are Tamaris easy to get from the city center, and suitable for youngsters, Morina has a lively feel, Mikocom atmosphere, 
Guincho best swimming area and nice waves for surfing, and Miko. Just remember that the beaches get crowded quickly, so arrive early in the summer. Number 2. Madrid, Spain. Madrid, cheerful and vibrant at all hours, is famous for being an open city with all kinds of people from anywhere in the world. In addition to its famous museums, busy streets dotted with all kinds of shops, restaurants with world cuisine, and unbeatable nightlife, Madrid will surprise you with its tranquil historic spots that charm everyone walking by. Here you'll find traditional family-run, century-old bars where friends meet up for a drink, every style of the neighborhood, and cultural centers that offer up an alternative type of tourism. Madrid's authenticity is hard to beat. It is welcoming and diverse. Madrid is, without a doubt, one of Europe's most interesting cities. One of my favorite things to do when visiting a new city is to take a free walking tour. You'll meet a local guide who can answer any of your questions, get knowledge of the history and culture, and get a feel for the layout of the area. The top free tours in the city are Cats Hostel Walking Tours, New Europe, and free walking tours in Madrid. Number 1. Salzburg, Austria. It is understandable why Salzburg's stunning Baroque old town is recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The city was governed by archbishops and fueled by the salt trade when it was a part of the Holy Roman Empire, as evidenced by its historic buildings, exquisite gardens, and quaint alleyways. It makes sense that Salzburg, the home of Mozart, would grow to become a center of the arts, theater, and music. A world of natural treasures lies beyond the city, including stunning mountain views, glistening lakes, outdoor activities, opulent spas, and secluded getaways in the Salzburger land. The greatest seasons to visit for ideal weather are June, August and December, February, which are considered peak seasons. The summer high season is the ideal time to visit Salzburg if you enjoy sunny days. The neighboring hills are ideal for walking, with beautiful sky and temperatures between 60 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 15.5 and 21 degrees Celsius. One of Europe's most exquisite towns, Salzburg has been meticulously conserved over the ages. It is encircled by lakes, the foothills of the Alps, and towering mountains. As our tour of Europe's top 20 towns comes to an end, we've only scratched the surface of what these incredible destinations have to offer. Each town, rich in history and culture, beckons for a deeper exploration. If you've been inspired by the beauty and diversity of these places, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your support helps us bring more adventures like this to you. Until next time, keep exploring and may your travels lead you to your remarkable discoveries, thanks for watching.